Well, hey, my friends. I am sitting in my cozy little spot here in my living room, and I am here to chat with you about the September chapter of the Life Giving Home book. So this book is divided into a chapter for each month of the year. And it goes through and it talks about how you can provide a wonderful, warm, welcoming home and environment for all the people who grace your home. And so today we're going to be talking about September. And I am so very excited about the fact that it's fall and um, that it's September. Um, there are some beautiful ideas in this chapter about how to create a life-giving home for your family, for your friends, and for everybody who comes into your home. And so today, it is very cold here, it's raining, and rather than filming where I usually do, I thought I would just kind of curl up in this little spot in my living room. This is kind of my cozy little corner, so I hope the lighting's okay. Um, it's dark today, and it's just all kinds of cozy. It's the quintessential kind of fall day, so it's really quite perfect. So we're going to go ahead and get um, right into the chapter. There are lots of really great ideas that I want to walk through and kind of talk about. Um, so let's just get started. So if you have the book, uh, this chapter begins on page 179. And it says, it's titled, When Seasons Change, Gathering in for Home and Soul. And this chapter is written by Sarah Clarkson. She is Sally Clarkson's daughter. And it starts off with this beautiful quote, and I won't read the entire thing because um, it's quite long, but it's from George Eliot in a letter to Miss Lewis, um, written October 1st, 1841. And the end of the quote says, Delicious autumn, my very soul is wedded to it, and if I were a bird, I would fly about the earth seeking the success of autumns. If I were a bird, that's what I would be doing too. Let me just say that just, I love all things about autumn and fall. And so the chapter starts out and um, they're talking about uh, a series that they would watch it's on um, British television called Lark Rise to Candleford. And she kind of explains about what this series is all about and how they watch it at the beginning of every autumn. And I actually do something quite similar, um, but only I watch the movie You've Got Mail. There's something about it that just, I have always, for the past nine or 10 years, have watched it every, the beginning of every fall. It's how I would celebrate the opening of fall. I think part of it is because in the opening scenes, um, Matt Ryan is picking up this like, perfect little pumpkin and they talk about um, school starting and about sending bouquets of sharpened pencils and it's just all this beautiful awesome language um, and so I could identify with that uh, in watching a series um, because I watch You've Got Mail. So she says autumn is a time to celebrate the fact that home is the place where love makes us welcome a shelter from which we will not be expelled. In this season, we sp celebrate the spaces in which we learn to prize and honor precious things. We celebrate shelter, belonging, and the love expressed in drawing all things into the rich, generous life of home. Love it. So then she goes on to sort of talk about how they celebrated autumn in their home and she gives lots of really practical ideas and so I'm going to go through uh, some of them with you. So the first one was a room or corner of one's own and she says in the chapter um, during the years when everyone was at home each person had a corner to call his or her own and for one hour in the afternoon everyone went to their special places to read, draw, write, or dream. We work to make these places special, tiny refuges, refuge, tiny refuges in which we had the chance to pull away and explore the interior, interior world of thought and imagination. And so that's kind of where I am 
chatting to you from today is from my special little corner in my living room. Here I have a cozy blanket. I just have it draped on the back of the chair. I've got some throw pillows to kind of squishy up the chair and make it even more comfy. It's an oversized chair as you can probably tell. Um, I have another throw blanket um, on my lap. This right here is a uh, hutch that my dad had built me and inside I have a basket with some water and pens and I have all my books and I've got my Bible, notebooks, um, just all of the things that I would need uh, just being in this cozy space. little spot is kind of my spot. Not a whole lot of people sit here. You can't see the TV from where I'm sitting and it has it's sort of a purposeful um, spot to sit in and it is just my little place where I like to have my morning devotions here and it's my place where I can kind of tuck away. In our home we have sort of adopted the idea that during nap time when my son sleeps the house is quiet. Um, and it's a time where I can just tuck away and pull away and just read and um, sometimes I'll watch YouTube videos or um, I just do things that will feed my soul mostly. Um, apart from doing housework and things like that, um, it is just a time to kind of pull away. And when Aubrey is home from school, we allow that time um, for her to just kind of be quiet, to do activities that she can't necessarily do when her brother is awake. Um, things like painting, of course he can paint, but it's just a lot more of a difficult task because he's quite younger. So um, it's a time that we just set aside for not a whole lot of talking, and it's a time to kind of just replenish ourselves. So later she says, in the autumn months, as the year draws to its close, as the days grow colder and the darkness comes earlier, the cultivation of quiet spaces allows the soul within a home to take refuge in silence. Solitude and with it an interior world is something we desperately need to defend in the crazed busyness of the modern world. And then she says later, home is a space where such quiet can be cultivated and sacred spaces kept, even in the midst of the most talkative household. Home is the stronghold of calm to which we return, the sacred, quiet space where we may hear that still small voice, the place we come into from our daily battles to find refuge and to dash strength afresh for the fray. I always have liked to think of my home as a soft place to land for myself and for my family and for all who come in our doors. We know that the outside world can be crazy and chaotic and we can be so inundated with all kinds of stuff. Other people's bad attitudes and even, you know, traffic and just all of the, um, the harshness. And so my home, I've always wanted it to be that soft place to land where when you come into this place that we lift up one another, we encourage one another, and we build each other up, and we allow it to be a safe, soft place for people to learn and to grow and to express ideas, and that they are nurtured here, and they are warmed, and they are comforted. Now, we are human, and of course that doesn't always happen, but that is the goal. And that is the space that I operate from. So that having that as the goal in mind, whenever we get off kilter from that, we get pulled back, I can pull us back in and center us back to that place of it being our home, being a soft place to land. So the next idea is a well-stocked kitchen and pantry. Um, and so they're talking about the idea of having a kitchen and a pantry that is just filled and stocked with the things that you would need to create delicious meals and to um, 
have like a batch of cookies for tea, a quick loaf of bread for breakfast. These are all quite easy to produce if the ingredients and the equipment are right on hand. And so on the first day of fall, I sat down and I did film this so you'll see kind of um, you'll see this, but I sit down and I pull out um, all of my fall themed cookbooks and I just wrote out the recipes and the ideas um, and the meals and the celebrations that we were going to be taking place in and doing and wanting to implement this fall. And so I thought of different ingredients that I would need to have on hand, things like flour and pumpkin and pumpkin pie spice and um, uh, more more heavy meats like roast and ham, things that we weren't eating so much over um, the summer months where the food was a lot lighter. Um, and so I got my mind thinking and planning and dreaming up all of those ingredients that we will need. Because when those festivities come, things like Thanksgiving um, and our, our wedding anniversary is coming and things like that, when those special moments come or even just in the very ordinary. Um, for instance, I wanted to make um, a loaf of pumpkin bread uh, for the past week and I just haven't had pumpkin on hand. And so these are the things that I want to make sure that I have in my pantry. So setting aside time in my day to plan that sort of thing out and that just kind of fills my soul so so much. Um, she says it all comes down to preparation, a bit of planning, a strategic shopping trip, a small dose of organization, and you have a home stocked and ready for a sudden blizzard, an unexpected guest, an impromptu celebration with those you love. Half of the comfort of home comes from having what you need on hand when you need it. And that's so very true. So making sure that you have those ingredients and those ideas in place for those cozy fall days um, and uh, just making that a time to sit down with your cookbooks and maybe with Pinterest um, and your notebook and just getting this all out on paper. So one of the next things was um, the stories we shared. So she says, autumn is a season for reading aloud. Well, in truth, all seasons are good for that pastime, and I wish all people would enjoy reading year-round. But as autumn draws near with its cooler days and crisp evenings, and I begin to ponder exactly what I want to be present in my home for the long nights ahead, I think first of books. Autumn is the perfect season in which to share stories with those you love. And then she talks quite a bit about um, reading together and reading aloud uh, with those that you love. And so for myself, I, um, I'm thinking about the books that I want to read this fall season. Um, reading as a mom, for me, is often a luxury. Um, but there's lots of books that I want to dive deep into. One that I'm reading right now, um, I'm, I've just started it, so it's kind of really going to be appropriate for the fall season, but it's called Bread and Wine by Shauna Nyquist. Um, and it's just stories of food and connectedness. Um, and their relationship with God all in the midst of it and it's so perfectly fall appropriate. I also wanted to um, read through the Little House on the Prairie books. Um, I read all of them as a kid and last winter I actually read The Long Winter. We had a particularly um, difficult, cold, um, barren winter last year and um, so I read The Long Winter and reading the struggles that they went through I was like I'm quite fine here on my cozy couch like I'm not doing anything close to what they did um, but so since then I have wanted to go through those books and I know they're kids books but um, I love them so much and there's just something about reading um, those classic stories that I love so I think um, this fall and into the winter I'm going to reread the uh, Little House on the Prairie books too. Okay, so next is the art of the schedule, making space to taste and breathe. Um, and as a planner-loving girl, this got me excited. Um, so she begins to talk about um, scheduling, and she says, "Our days are kind of, our days are a kind of symphony whose music and meaning can be easily marred by excessive activity. The fact is that our time." 
especially in an area of ceaseless possible action, is defined as much by what we choose not to do as by what we do. It takes a wise and present mind to discern what is necessary and right in the countless available hours of work, social, social, socialization, entertainment, internet, and education. Home in this context can easily become just an eating and sleeping space for busy people instead of a center of life and community. I'm sure we all know someone, or maybe we are that someone, who home just really is a spot where you eat and you sleep and you get up and you go, go, go. Um, and usually those people talk about how busy they are, often stressed out, um, plates are full with things to do. Um, if they're parents, sometimes their children are just ragged and run dry and if they're parents, sometimes the kids are just often um, irritable and cranky and just ragged because they're being run everywhere. Um, and home is not, home becomes more of a launch pad than, um, than a place of grounding and a place of nurturing um, and a place of rest. It is just becomes a space. Um, and so I never want that to be for my life uh, and for the life of my family. And that's not to say that um, we'll never not be busy. There are seasons of busyness and there are seasons of rest. But I want to create a culture within our home that we do not um, let our schedules run us. We run our schedules and there's plenty of space for just relaxation. I just think it's really important that we remember um, to schedule space to to taste things around us, to um, to breathe, to experience our family, and to experience quiet and to experience peace, rather than constantly being on the go. And so she began to talk about how her parents um, would always. Uh, go away in January and they would um, retreat to a favorite coffee shop or hotel. They'd set out their day timers, notebooks, no, no cell phones in those days, and list all of the possibilities for the upcoming months. With prayer and discussion, they would select the activities that would nourish the soul, vocation, and fellowship, and set those on the family calendar. Some possibilities they simply said no to, some they decided to experience for a trial period. But the goal was to emerge from the end of that planning day with a schedule that would further spiritual, mental, relational, and educational growth for the entire family while leaving space for joy and rest. But I just love that idea. So one of the next things is soup and bread. And if you caught my um, fall decor tag, you will know I talked about um, soup in that uh, there's nothing that screams fall to me like soup. Warm, cozy bowl of soup and of course a little bread on the side. Um, and so they talk about having soup uh, for meals and she says, soup and bread meals were made for days when the air is tinged with frost and the wind stings the skin. Soup was made to be eaten when night comes far too soon and fresh buttered bread is the antidote to nighttime despair. And as I think about growing up, um, many, many a night uh, my mom would make uh, homemade biscuits and um, a pot of soup and just smelling that simmering on the stove just kind of takes me back and it is it's that those warm comforting memories that uh, she created within our home that I carry with me um, so many years later um, so I want to implement that within my own family my kids don't like soup but uh, that's okay they can they can learn right <laughs> Um, and then there's some other things that they talk about, the joys of the harvest, where um, she talks about going to an apple orchard and picking apples and making applesauce. And, and then one of the last ideas is to create an autumn centerpiece. And this would be really great, um, a really great thing to do um, with your kiddos. And the idea was to just go out into nature and to pick up... Um, Things that would make a great centerpiece, leaves and pine cones and seed pods, nuts, um, and intertwining that with um, raffia and evergreen boughs, um, apples, pears, 
flowers and um, wrapping it together and creating a beautiful centerpiece for your home. Um, one little note, if you are collecting things like acorns or pine cones, you do want to stick those into the oven like on 250 degrees, I think for about an hour. Um, and you just want to make sure that you do that because there can be little um, little bugs and little creatures that live inside of those things and you do not want them coming out. Um, I know a horror story about someone who did not do that and it's not pretty. So if you do do that kind of thing, make sure that um, you do uh, you know, heat them up to take care of that. <laughs> um, and so lastly, I'm just going to read this very last couple paragraphs and then we'll close the video. Um, it is called Autumn, Home, Autumn Homecoming. Autumn always comes eventually, however long summer has lingered. The first bite of chill is in the air, rain falls in winter steadiness, or the sn first snowstorm sends a flurry of feathery flakes. The light wanes so early that day, and the night seems almost to blend. And in that moment, the impulse to scurry for home becomes an ache in the stomach, a yearning in the heart. How joyous a thing it is to then arrive on the doorstep of a home whose windows are golden with waiting light, where soup is on the stove, and the cupboard is stocked against any number of unexpected storms. A home like that feels almost like a person itself, with arms open to receive the weary. In the shelter and fireside splendor it so generously offers, we taste a bit of what home in its essence reflects. For those rare golden moments of homecoming allows us, through their joy, to reach beyond space and time to their source. The love whose grace is the source of all good things. The Father in whose heart we have our home. God grant that my home may be such a shelter, a refuge whose windows are a light and welcome, drawing the lonely and wandering in from the, from the cold. And my hope is that you embody that in your home. It's an intentional sort of thing and you have to cultivate that culture within your home. It's not easy for us as the homemakers, as the women, as the mothers. Um, it is our role to bring that into play and to implement those ideas into our home and to gently steer our family back into that place where home is a soft place to land. It is a refuge, it is a warmth, and it is a place of life-giving um, nourishment for our souls. And so my prayer is that you guys would feel equipped and that you would feel empowered to do um, just that. So I'd love to hear in the comments down below some of the things that you're going to do uh, to implement some of these ideas into your home this fall. I will have an upcoming video sharing with you um, how I'm celebrating fall and some of the things that I'm doing around here. So stay tuned for that. Again, I'd love to hear your comments, so please leave them down below. And um, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.